everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Heather and I'm a member of the STEM response team here at the University of Wolverhampton and in this maths catch-up session today we'll be discussing advanced algebra. So firstly we're going to begin with algebraic fractions and the first section we're going to tackle with algebraic fractions is simplifying and to simplify what you simply do is cancel the fraction. So you do this by finding the common factor in the numerator, which is the number at the top of the fraction, and also the denominator, so the number at the bottom of the fraction. And you divide this by that common factor. Remember, you may need to factorise the fraction first, and we discussed how to do this in the first algebra session. So if you look at this example here, we have 36ab to the power of 5 over 27a to the power of 2, b to the power of 3. So remember, we have to find the common factors first. And the common factors here are 9, a, and b to the power of 3. So, for example, as you can see, 9 goes into the number 36 four times and into the number 27 three. So this is how we'll simply cancel out the fraction to make the fraction smaller. Then you'll also need to multiply and divide your algebraic fractions. And you do this by multiplying the numerators and the denominators separately. However, if you are dividing, you need to flip the second fraction upside down first and then you multiply. So if you look at this example here, we have x plus 3 over 2x times by x to the power of 2 over x plus 3 cubed. So firstly, we need to cancel out the common factors. So as you can see here in this um, fraction, the common factors are x plus 3 and x. So we'll cancel those out first. Then once we've done that, we can go ahead and multiply the numerators and the denominators separately, which leaves us with x over 2, x plus 3. Now let's look at an example for division. So as you can see here, we have x squared minus 16 over 8 divided by x minus 4 over 2x. So remember, first we need to flip the second fraction upside down. So we'll do that. And then remember to change the symbol sign so it goes from division to multiplication. We need to factorise the fraction. Remember, we said we may need to do this. And then you need to cancel out the common factors. So as you can see here, the common factors are 2 and x minus 4. Once we've done that, you can see it leaves us with x open bracket x plus 4 close bracket over 4. So now this is a bit where it's your turn. So please feel free to pause the video here and have a go at working through these two equations here on the screen. It doesn't matter if you get it right. It's all about you just having a go and learning. And when you're ready, press play and we'll show you the answers. So did you get your answers right? Hopefully you did, but as you, if you didn't, not to worry, simply go back through that section of the video and have a go again. So now you'll also be looking at addition and the subtraction of algebraic fractions. And to do this, you need to focus on the denominator. If they have the same denominator, that's great, and you can just continue with doing addition or the subtraction. However, if they are different, there's a few things you'll need to do first. You'll need to find the common denominator, and this is the lowest common multiple of the two numbers or multiple numbers that you have. You'll need to rewrite each fraction by multiplying the top and the bottom by the same thing. And you'll need to make them into one fraction by either subtraction or addition. So if we look at this example here, we have 3x plus y over 2 minus x minus 2y over 7. As you can see here, both the, new, the denominators are different. And the lowest common multiple of 2 and 7 is 14. So we need to rewrite each fraction with a denominator of 14, and then we need to multiply the top and bottom fraction of the first fraction by 7, and multiply the top and the bottom of the second fraction by 2. So once we've done that, you can see now we have 7 open bracket 3x plus y close bracket over 14, minus 2 open bracket x minus 2y close bracket over 14. So you can see here that the fraction has changed to make them the same. Once you've done this, you could then go ahead and do the fraction like it's telling you to do. And the answer you should get is 19x plus 11y over 14. Once again, this is now your turn to have a go for yourself. So pause the video just here and work through these two equations and hopefully you'll get the answer right. And once you are ready to continue, press play and then we'll see the answers. So here are the answers for both of these equations and how to figure them out. Hopefully you got them right, but if you didn't, not to worry, just simply just go back over that little section just there and try again and hopefully you'll get it right next time. The next topic we're going to be going through is inequalities. 
So with inequalities, what you need to do is you need to solve them. And you do this by doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. If you multiply or divide by a negative sign, you need to remember to flip the inequality sign. So if we look at this example, we have 3, open bracket, 6 minus x, close bracket, is greater than or equal to 12. So firstly, we need to get rid of the brackets. So we multiply these out, and that will leave us with 18 minus 3x is greater than or equal to 12. And the, the game of this really is to get x by itself to find out what x is. So obviously, we need to subtract 18 from both sides. And this will leave us with minus 3x is greater than or equal to minus 6. And again, we need to get x by itself, so we need to divide each side by minus 3. So this will leave us with x is smaller than or equal to 2. We also have quadratic inequalities, and these are a little bit different as they contain a squared term, like a quadratic equation. And these usually provide two solutions. They either provide you with two sets of values or they provide you with a range. So if you look at this example here, we have 4x to the power of 2 minus 14 is less than or equal to 2. So firstly, we need to add 14 to both sides. So that will leave us with 4x to the power of 2 is less than or equal to 16. We then need to get x by itself. So we need to divide each side by 4. So that means we have 4 squared is less than or equal to 4. So then it leaves us with x is either smaller than or equal to 2 or greater than or equal to minus 2. The next topic we're going to be going over is simultaneous equations. In simultaneous equations, you may need to use elimination, and you do this when the equations are linear. So you need, you need to find the values of the variables which, which will make both equations true. So you need to rearrange the equation in the form ax plus by equals c. You need to make the coefficients to the number that's before the letters in the equations of the variable the same. And you do this either by multiplying one or both of the equations. You add or subtract, subtract the equations to get rid of terms with the same coefficient. You need to then put these back into the original equations to find out what, say, x is, for example. And then you do this again to find out what is y. So if we look at this example here, we have 3x minus 2y equals 1 and 2x plus 3y equals 11.5. Firstly, we need to label each equation, so we'll label one equation 1 and the other equation 2. We need to make the coefficients of one of the variables the same, and we'll label these with new labels. So we'll then label them 3 and 4. So as you can see here, we've made y the same. So for the first equation, we've times 2 by 3, so we times the whole equation by 3. And for the second equation, we times the 3 by 2, so we times the whole equation by 2. Next, we need to eliminate the y's to find out the value of x, and we do these by adding them together. So this will give us 13x equals 26, which means x equals 2. We then put this x value back into one of the original equations to find out y. Again, you'll check your answer by putting all of these values back into your equation to make sure that you have worked it out correctly. In simultaneous equations, you can also use substitution, and you use substitution when one equation is not linear. So you need to rearrange the linear equation to get the variable by itself. You substitute this into the quadratic equation. You rearrange this into the standard format. You put the values back into the linear equation and find the other variables, and you put the values back into the quadratic equation at the end to double check your answer. So if we look at this example here, we label each equation 1 and 2 again, like we did last time, and we substitute 1 into 2 and create this as a new equation, calling this equation 3. Next, we need to rearrange this equation to make it a quadratic equation, like we said previously, which leaves us to figuring out that y equals 3 or y equals 1. Now we need to substitute y equals 3 and y equals 1 back into the original equation, so we've gone with equation 1 here. So we figured out that x is equals minus 1, or x is 3. To check these, we'll put all of these figures back into equation 2. So as you can see here, the solutions are x equals minus 1, and y equals 3, and x equals 3, and y equals 1. Now it's again your turn to have a go, so pause the video here and work through this equation 
Again, it doesn't matter if you don't get it 100% right the first time, it's all about you learning. And when you're ready to see the answer, just press play. So this is the answer to the previous question. Hopefully you got it right. If not, just simply go back over the bits we've just discussed and hopefully you'll get it right the second time. The next topic we're going to be discussing is proof. So with proof, it simply states that you can write any even number as 2x. You can write any odd number as 2x plus 1. You can write consecutive numbers as x, x plus 1, x plus 2, etc. You can show something as a multiple of a number, such as x, by showing it can be written, written as x times something. You can add, subtract, or multiply integers, and you'll always end up with the integer. So for example, prove the difference between any two even numbers is always even. So we have 2x and 2y. So 2x minus 2y equals 2, open bracket, x minus y, close bracket. And this would leave us with x minus y. So 2x minus 2y equals 2n, where n equals x minus y. You can also use this to build up your argument. For example, prove the result of dividing a rational number can be any other rational number is also rational. You can also disprove by finding a counter example. For example, find a counter example to disprove the following when x is prime, x plus 1 is prime. And the final topic we're going to be discussing today is functions. So a function is simply when you take an input and give an output. And this is a type of mapping and a set of instructions. And this can either be written as f open bracket x close bracket or f colon x. And both of these simply means that f takes the value of x. The values you put in are called the domain and the values you output are called the range. A function maps each values in the domain to one value in the range. You can evaluate a function of different values by subbing each into the function. So if you look at this example here, find f4 for the function of fx equals x plus 6 to the power of 2. So we put x equals 4 into the function, and this equals 100. You also have composite functions. When you have two different functions, say fx and gx, you combine them to make a single function, a composite function. And this will be written as fgx. And you always do the function closest to x first. So if we look at this example here, we have g of x equals g, open bracket, f, open bracket, x, close bracket, close bracket. And this will be simplified as g, open bracket, x squared plus 20, close bracket, equals 2, open bracket, x squared plus 20, close bracket, plus 3, which will leave you with 2x squared plus 43. An inverse function reverses the effect of the original function. The inverse of a function reverses what the function does. And you can find the inverse of a function by using the following steps. You write out the function, rearrange, and then replace. So if you look at this example here, you can see that the x equals 4x, 4y plus 12. And we arrange this so it's 4y equals x minus 12. And then we need to find out what y is by itself. So we have y equals x minus 12 over 4. And then the inverse function of x will be x minus 12 over 4. So that comes to the end of our advanced algebra session here today. Hopefully this has helped you. Feel free to go back and watch any other video again if there's any other bits that you've not quite understood and definitely have a go at the question because this will help you. Make sure you check out all the other videos in our maths catch-up session and all our other sessions that we have to offer. See you soon.